Today, we're going to talk about sin. What is sin? A sin is any thought or action that falls short of God's will. Sin is not a subject you'll hear much about in ministry circles today. You'll hear about grace. Oh yes, you'll hear a lot about grace these days. And grace is important because without God's grace, not one of us could be saved. Saved from what? The wrath of God. Wrath? Yes, wrath. His anger. That's another word you'll seldom hear. But the Bible is clear that the wrath of God is coming on the unrighteousness and the wickedness of men. Romans 1.18. Sounds scary, right? Maybe that's why we don't talk about it. God's law is perfect, and anything we do in thought, word, or deed that falls short of his perfection is sin. Sin is a transgression of the law and rebellion against God. Sin actually separates us from God. The Bible uses a word picture to illustrate the definition of sin. Sin is like the archer who misses the target and God's will is like the center of the target. He draws back his bow and sends the arrow on its way, but instead of hitting the bullseye, it veers off and misses the mark. The arrow doesn't land where it's supposed to, and when we sin, we fall short of his will and we miss the mark. The Bible says all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, Romans 3.23. The Bible says the wages of sin is death, but the free gift from God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, Romans 5.9. Let's talk about money for a second. Wages are paid for a job done. It's the money you are paid for what you have done in your job. It's what you are due. So the choice is yours. Will you accept the free gift from God and choose eternal life, or will you cho choose death? Have you made that choice? Let's see, death or life? It should be a simple choice, but it's not. And millions of people in our world today are not making the right choice. Instead of life, they choose death. But if they die in their sins without Christ, the Bible says they will go to hell in the lake of fire, everlasting punishment, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Matthew 25, 46. Many are called, but few are chosen. As believers, we should be heartbroken about this. We should have compassion on the souls that are perishing. Who, you know who they are? They are our friends, our neighbors, even churchgoers, our family, all the unbelievers, the ambivalent, the indecisive. They don't care one way or the other. They are neither hot nor cold. In the book of Revelation, you know what Jesus says about these types? He says he will spit them out of his mouth. That doesn't sound good. How about the atheists who simply say that God does not exist and there is no heaven and no hell and they say that when you die, you simply cease to exist. Completely opposite to what the Bible says. Here's what I say about what the atheists believe. If he's wrong, he will spend eternity in hell in the lake of fire, everlasting agony. If I'm wrong, which I know I'm not, but hypothetically speaking, I simply cease to exist. Getting back to the issue of sin again. Just how sinful is sin? As we said, sin is any transgression, transgression or disobedience of the law, and it's rebellion against God. Anyone who has not invited Jesus Christ into their heart is rebelling against God. Sin is offensive to God. It's a crime against God. 
And one day soon, God will unleash his wrath and his anger on the unbelievers. See, that's what we don't talk about today. Today, we talk about the love of God, the grace of God, and the mercy of God. And thankfully, God has been showing these attributes to us since time began. Otherwise, we would be dead already. But there will come a time, and some say soon, when the end of time will come. And as my husband always says, are you ready? So, we have established what sin is. It's missing the mark, God's mark. It's lawlessness, for the wages of sin is death, Romans 6.23, applies to all sin, whether in thought, word, or deed. That's right. Hebrews 9.27 says, it's appointed once for man to die, and then the judgment. Do you want to face God on Judgment Day without Jesus? Jesus delivers us from the wrath to come, 1 Thessalonians. The wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience, Ephesians 5, 6. So what's the remedy? What's the cure for sin? Well, there's power in the blood. Blood is like a river of life for the body, providing nutrients to every cell in our body. Blood is an amazing substance. Even with all the advances in medicine and modern health care today and expertise in treating diseases, blood cannot be artificially made. It's the miracle liquid created by God providing life. The Bible has a lot to say about blood. It says without the shedding of blood, there is no remission or removal of sin. Hebrews 9.22. And today, friends, it's the precious blood of Jesus Christ that washes away all our sins. All we have to do is ask and believe. In the Old Testament, we are given a vivid graphic description to help us put sin in its proper perspective. And what better time of year than Halloween to discuss this? A blood sacrifice was necessary. They would take a lamb, they were shepherds, a baby lamb. Now bear with me here. It was like a pet to them in those days. Cute, spotless, perfect, beautiful. Well, they had to slit the throat of that cute little innocent animal. Can you imagine? Can you imagine how hard that must have been for them? I couldn't do it. It was brutal. It was messy. It was bloody. Sin is messy. But sacrifice and shedding of blood was necessary. Why? Well, to show how bad sin is. A sacrifice is never easy. That's why it's called a sacrifice. It's not supposed to be easy, but it was required. God required it to show us the seriousness of sin. It was God's sacrificial system, and it demanded a blood sacrifice for the removal of sins. In the beginning, as soon as Adam and Eve sinned in the Garden of Eden, the sacrificial system began. Even though in the book of Genesis it doesn't really spell it out for us, it tells us that after they ate of the forbidden fruit, their eyes were opened and their sin was exposed, their nakedness. And they covered themselves with leaves of fig. However, it then tells us that God made coverings of skin for them. How did that happen? An animal had to die. And so we have the beginning of the sacrificial system in which God made a way to deal with sin through the animal sacrificial system. And this animal sacrificial system continued over and over again up until the time 
God sent his son Jesus to be crucified on the cross as God's perfect lamb. The lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. The perfect sacrifice. Only through the precious blood of the lamb, Jesus Christ, that's how we have victory over sin. He was the ultimate sacrifice. And that's why there was no longer a need for the animal sacrificial system. Once Jesus was offered as the perfect sacrifice, nothing else, no other sacrifice was necessary or needed. Aren't you thankful that the animal sacrificial system is no longer in effect? Jesus' precious blood covers all our sins. Thanks be to God. Amen? Amen. Amen. In Romans 12, the New Testament, Paul, the Apostle Paul, says, I beseech you, brethren, therefore, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Jesus' ultimate sacrifice covers all our sins. Instead of Adam's sin attributed to us, we receive Christ's righteousness. Are we going to still sin? Yes. But when we commit individual acts of sin, we can come boldly to the throne. Because of Jesus, we are authorized to approach the throne of grace with confidence. Hebrews 4.16. Knowing that coming to God and confessing our sins will allow us to renew our relationship with him. Because Jesus took our sins on himself. And as the Holy Spirit indwells us, our sin nature loses its grip and its grasp, and we are no longer a slave to sin. And this is important to understand. God no longer sees our sin when we have trusted in Jesus because Christ is our righteousness. How great is that? He doesn't see us. He sees Christ. And the righteousness of Christ. First Corinthians 15, 57 tells us, He gives us victory over sin and death through the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember that without Jesus, our sins will place us in hell. Whether our sins are big or small, apart from God's grace. In closing, I want to talk about the good news. Jesus paid the penalty for our sins, yours, mine, the sins of the whole world at the cross. If we will repent and be sorry and turn from our sin and turn to Jesus in faith, then our sins will be forgiven and we will receive the gift of eternal life. But it's an if and then situation here. We must turn to the Lord consciously and make a conscious choice. Most of us here have done that before. Romans 1.8. So now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. Once you confess your sins to Jesus and invite him into your life, you have that blessed assurance. Isn't that wonderful? Forgiveness of sin, as well as grace and peace and eternal life in paradise, paradise are only found in God. Freedom from the grasp of sin is only found in God through Christ Jesus our Lord. Ooh. How can you receive forgiveness to know you have eternal life? Admit that you are a sinner and in need of a Savior. 
Abandon your own self-effort and realize you cannot be saved on your own, your own works or your own effort. Accept freely Christ's sacrifice as payment for your sins. Acknowledge Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Amen. And I pray that everyone within the sound of my voice has accepted the free gift of eternal life. Because today is the day of salvation. Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise God.